Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the last session of the day. Thank you all for being here. Um, we understand we're standing between uh, you and the beer and the barbecue. So we appreciate you all being here. Um, this session is on Manila, shared file system management. Um, if you think you're in the wrong session, now is a good time to turn around and run away. Um, <laughs> jokes apart, um, the logo on the right, top right was launched this week, so this is fairly new. Uh, it was voted um, in last month, and it was selected. So this is the official logo for Manila. Uh, I do have stickers here for that uh, logo, in case you want to grab some for your laptop and your desks. Uh, I also have a few other swag from the NetApp booths uh, with solid fire printed on it as well, if you wanted to grab it later. Um, so we'll start off uh, with just a brief introduction about the presenters. Uh, my name is Anika Suri, and I'm the Technical Alliance Manager for uh, the OpenStack ecosystem at NetApp. Uh, and I have here my colleague, um, Cameron. And Cameron I'll let him introduce himself. Yep. I'm a technology strategist for SUSE. <clears throat> Thanks, Cam. Uh, so moving on, um, just a quick audience poll. How many people actually have used Manila here? Anyone? OK, just one. OK, perfect. This is a perfect audience. So we'll, we'll cover the basics. Uh, we'll try and you know, go into depth as, as the time permits. And you know, please feel free to ask questions and answers in the end. Those are more than welcome. Um, we'll briefly uh, start off with, so you know, Manila is kind of named after the, the city of, in the Philippines, right? Um, you must have heard Manila in that context, or you must have heard the uh, Manila envelopes in your filing cabinet, right? Uh, we're going to talk about Manila in the context of OpenStack. Uh, so we'll briefly talk about what exactly is Manila, because there's only one gentleman here who knows what it is. Uh, why would you want to use Manila? We'll talk a little bit about the use cases. Uh, my colleague Cam will cover a little bit of the Sahara integration with Manila as well. Uh, we'll talk about the Metaka updates, which is the latest release. Um, we'll talk about um, the distributions, and we'll show you a demo on NetApp Storage with SUSE Cloud 6, uh, which is their latest release. Uh, and we'll talk about what's upcoming in Manila in Newton. And then we'll take question and answers in the end. So starting off with what Manila is. Uh, Manila is OpenStack uh, shared file service program. Um, and it, it supports multi-tenancy. And what it does is it provides secure file share as a service. What that essentially means is that you could have, you know, for example, a 5 gig NFS share, right? And you could share it between different tenants, and that too securely, which means you could have different departments, such as your sales, your marketing department, and both of them will be able to share the same file share um, securely by you providing a network range on who has access and who doesn't. Um, so Manila for, uh, for file share is kind of similar to you know, what Cinder is for block share, if you guys know the Cinder project, uh, except there's a tiny bit of difference. Uh, Manila has this networking component that I just mentioned, right? Uh, which is why there's a little bit of more magic that goes into Manila than Cinder at the back end. So as, you know, as we saw, there's only one person in the room that really, really knows what Manila is. Uh, this, these are going to be a key, uh, key slides for you to actually understand the concepts of Manila. We're going to be referring to these terms later in the presentation as well. Um, so please take note of these terms. Uh, share, of course, we already talked about it. It's an instance of a shared file system. Uh, it can be accessed concurrently by multiple instances. Uh, ACLs, which are access control lists or shared access rules, uh, they define what the clients can access in the share, and they're usually given by, you know, like an IP or a side insider notation. That could differ, you know, based on uh, what you're trying to do and what drivers you're using. A shared network, uh, that defines the neutron network and subnet through which instances access the share. Security service, uh, it's a finer grained client access rule authorization, uh, such as LDAP. Uh, snapshots are read-only copies of shared contents. Uh, and backend and driver, you know, every, every vendor has their own backend and every vendor has their own drivers. Uh, backend is basically a provider of shares, and the shares re uh, resides at the single, on a single backend. Uh, and the driver is basically vendor or technology specific, of course, uh, and uh, it's technology specific implementation of the backend API. So um, now we move on to a little bit of the history, right? Um, Manila was first introduced back uh, in the Atlanta time frame, right, in 2014 when it was first introduced. And, and since then, it's only grown. You know, it's got a lot of traction. Uh, there was no stopping Manila. It was officially introduced as a core service in the Kilo release. 
And there were a lot of few, uh, a lot of important features that were introduced in that release. You know, for instance, uh, storage pools was one of them, where you could have different pools instead of one big pot, right? You could have different pools of different kinds of storage. Uh, for instance, you could have SSDs, you, you could have disks, um, spinning disks, and instead of one big pool, basically. Uh, and then, for instance, also in the Liberty release, we had uh, a lot of other good features, such as, uh, such as consistency groups. Uh, and Cam will be talking more about you know, availability zones and, and other features. Uh, but consistency groups is when you, uh, you want to combine the shares based on consistency for data protection. You can do that. Manila gives you that capability. So moving on to Manila today. So the open, latest OpenStack release, as you know, is Mataka. Uh, and Manila today, uh, we'll just talk briefly about uh, you know, the number of drivers it has. Currently, it has about 18 drivers, uh, which is uh, you know, an, an increment from the last release. Um, the blueprints completed in this cycle were about 43. Uh, this number is a little down from the last cycle, um, just because there was a lot of time spent in um, you know, resolving bugs. You see the stats on the right. So there were about 232 bugs that were resolved. Uh, and then the major blueprints that were covered were, you know, for instance, share replication. I list a few of them here, but Cam will be covering these in detail because we'll talk about what's, what's in Mitaka and what's upcoming in Newton in the, uh, in the future slides. Uh, so before we move on to uh, you know, other things, I quickly just want to cover uh, Manila operation and deployment options that you have with NetApp. Um, there is a Boolean variable which is called driver handles share servers. And this, this variable is set in the Manila config file. If this variable is set to true, uh, that means that the driver will handle the share servers. And if it's set to false, then it won't. You're kind of on your own. Um, for the deployment choices with NetApp, you have two choices. One is direct and one is indirect. Uh, sorry, one is intermediated. Uh, with, direct, uh, with direct, there is um, the Manila driver is directly going to talk to the NetApp FAS storage. Uh, and in the intermediate one, there is a software entity in the middle that takes commands from the Manila driver and then passes it on to the FAS systems, or AFF, or any other NetApp storage for that matter. Uh, and then in the network plugin, you have three options. You have a standalone, you have a Nova network, and you have Neutron. And all of these plugins you know, will support the segmentation that the network supports. So for, instance, um, uh, so for instance, Neutron supports VLAN segmentation. So that's what the plugin is going to support when you use that in, in conjunction with Manila. So moving on, the good news is, not for the good part, uh, the good news is that we have about 14 entrants uh, in the Metaka release. Uh, you know, congratulations to them and a very welcome. Uh, thank you again for contributing to the Metaka code. Uh, and we have, you know, a few good names are Ericsson, Walmart, SAP, EasyStack, um, AT&T. Um, so there have been a lot of good contributions. Um, NetApp does lead the code contributions currently, and still, uh, NetApp kind of pioneered in this project, and NetApp is about 28% uh, of the code contributions, with Suze being at about 4%. Uh, and even in code reviews, right, uh, our engineers contribute heavily, so the code reviewing, even in the code reviewing, NetApp pioneers, and we have about 32% of the share uh, with Suze at about 4% again. Uh, these, the, the, you know, all these stats are available on Stackalytics. That's where we got them from. And these slides will be available to you later if you want to you know, review them or keep them for your record. OK. So we covered a lot um, you know, about what Manila is. Um, but you know, now it's the question, right? Why Manila? Uh, we talked about what it brings to the table. We talked about multi-tenancy. We talked about security, how it provides you know, a secure file share, right? Um, and of course, this helps you bring down the cost as well, because you know, there are a lot of other methods that you can use for file share. And if you use Manila, which is open source and part of the OpenStack project, uh, it definitely helps you, you know, bring down the cost of your deployment. Um, and IDC has, you know, of course, every, every analyst has their own, um, uh, own thing, right? And uh, IDC suggested that this is the age of cloud file services. Um, and the number for file share is increasingly, uh, you know, it's going up. And that's why the investment in file shares is also increasing. Uh, and that's why we think Manila is a really good idea, and you should all at least give Manila a chance in your OpenStack deployments. Um, so after all of this, you know, the question really is, why not? Why would you not want to use Manila? You know, it's free, it's secure, it provides multi-tenancy, which, kind of, uh, which is kind of the thing that you need for a hybrid cloud or a public cloud, right, or a private cloud. Um, and you know, if that doesn't, it's not this enough too. We'll we'll go over a few use cases that will definitely make you interested, more interested in Manila. 
Um, so I'll just briefly cover, you know, like the use cases, uh, and then Cam will go into those details. Uh, DevOps containers, you know, Sahara, uh, database as a service, they're all use cases that you're probably hearing at the conference right now anyway. And, you know, Cam will cover these in details, but these are all the use cases that kind of apply to Manila. Thanks, Anika. Um, thanks for getting us started there. Um, I'm really excited about uh, Manila, and I'm going to show you why in a few. There's several reasons why I'm excited about Manila. Okay, I'm going to talk about some of these use cases, and uh, let's go ahead and just deep dive into some of these use cases. <clears throat> First of all, standalone file shares. We've been using those for quite a long time in our environment today. You have legacy systems that uh, work off of these legacy file share services, whether they be SIFs or whether they be NFS. Um, it could be something else, right? You have systems connecting to those. You, you are maintaining um, those file share services in your environment today. You have a set of guys that are maintaining those. Maybe you're maintaining a set of scripts that is uh, deploying those share services across the board to hundreds to maybe even thousands of systems. Maybe you're using it on Linux systems and you're taking advantage of AutoMounter uh, to be able to deploy those and uh, map those into those systems. Um, you might have other systems that are using scripts for those deployments and mounting those up through scripts. Either way, you are spending a lot of time and effort to be able to mount those file systems and those file shares um, on your servers. Manila is going to fill the gap there. It's going to allow you to automate that framework okay, in OpenStack. Okay? So you can start moving those legacy environments into OpenStack. And that brings us to our enterprise applications. I had a colleague this week, a few days ago, uh, that was giving a session on how to um, take those enterprise applications and start moving those, migrating those into an OpenStack environment. <clears throat> Manila is going to fill one of those gaps. Um, what I see there, and that's what makes me excited, is that Manila is filling that gap, that need that we have for shared file services within OpenStack. Okay? You have legacy systems, enterprise applications that are utilizing those shared file systems today for your applications. You need a way to easily move those into an OpenStack environment. Manila is filling that gap for you, okay? <clears throat> Do we have any DevOps people here today? We got a couple, that's great. Um, IT people, <laughs> operations specifically, all right, okay, that's great. Um, so the way that I want to work through this DevOps thing, <laughs> DevOps is complex, and it's because of all these logos that you see here. There's a lot of pieces and parts that are working together. They're usually connecting through APIs, very pluggable infrastructure, okay? Um, you can take advantage of this kind of infrastructure on running on top of OpenStack. And the way that we can fill some of these gaps using Manila is you can use the file share services from Manila to plug in to these environments. Plug into OpenStack, plug into your Docker infrastructure, uh, managing share file systems on top of Docker. Uh, maybe you want your data to reside on your, your shared file system uh, using a, a Git backend for your DevOps environment. Uh, there's also analytics and containers that play a big role into DevOps. Um, I'll talk about those in just a little bit. Um, Manila will allow us to do snapshotting and cloning uh, in this environment. And then, of course, if you have a uh, multi-tier application uh, running, um, you're spinning that up you, using your DevOps lifecycle management. Uh, you can use the consistency groups and wrap that around that multi-tier application and enable that with shared file services, being able to um, manage that single share instance across the, the entire group of servers there in that multi-tier application. I've got a couple of uh, key um, DevOps tools in there. Since I'm from SUSE, I'm going to highlight those. <laughs> um, 
the open build service. Um, the open build service has been around for a long time. That automates the deployment of your, um, your RPMs, the creation of your RPMs. Uh, you can drop in your source code and it will build it for any distribution out there, all the major Linux distributions out there. Uh, we also have Kiwi. There's not a, lot of, not a lot of people that know about Kiwi unless you're a SUSE guy. Kiwi is a free resource that you can use to create images. There's several different tools popping up all over the place. Kiwi's been around for over a decade now, and uh, we've been able to use that to create images for a very long time at SUSE. And then SUSE Studio is a tool that runs on top of, um, runs on top of Kiwi. Gives you a nice little GUI interface for it as well. Um, you can go out to SUSEstudio.com and use that for free. <clears throat> Let's dig deeper into the Sahara integration. I've got this experimental. Now, I'm going to tell you why that is at this, at this stage of the game. There's a couple of use cases I want to dig into here with Sahara. We can use Manila um, to store um, our, you can, we, we can use the Manila file, file shares to store our binaries and job templates uh, for Sahara. And we can also use it for storing the input data and the output data of Sahara um, on running on top of Manila. Okay, and in a couple of ways. We can mount the NFS shares using the APIs, <clears throat> and Sahara will actually mount those for you. So that's fully automated. So the work has been done in Sahara in the Mataka release. That's completed. Okay, some of this is a bit experimental, so your mileage is going to vary a little bit. So you're going to have to test some things out uh, with that Sahara integration. Okay. There may be some pieces and parts that aren't quite connected yet. Um, I don't know exactly where those are, but I know that there are some, some pieces that aren't quite working yet with some of those drivers. There's also the Manila provisioned HDFS. What that means is now, instead of just F NFS as a backend file share for, uh, for Sahara, uh, or attaching you know, Cinder or something along those lines to Sahara, we can now have Manila provision out your HDFS for you. Um, so you have an HDFS backend that's native for, uh, for a Hadoop environment, environment there. Um, so to take those use cases a little bit further, this is what they look like. On, on the right-hand side, we have the, uh, the data sources running on Man a Manila provisioned HDFS. Um, so take note that one thing that uh, is quite unique here, uh, that uh, it's single user and it really is not that secure at this point. So that's something that is also missing in this HDFS driver as, uh, as well. Um, so hopefully that will be a blueprint as we move forward. Um, another thing that's, uh, uh, so another, the other use case on the left-hand side there uh, shows the, uh, the mounting using the, the NFS. This would be uh, auto mounting from the API that Sahara is taking advantage of there. Now this could be any one of the drivers that is in Manila. Now Manila has 18 drivers now in Mataka, so it's continually growing. You're going to see newer hardware vendors coming in as well, and you're going to see them start, starting to integrate um, a driver into Manila and uh, take advantage of the infrastructure that's there. So that's going to continually get better. What is new in, in Mataka? Okay, let's, let's give in a little bit of an update here. I'm going to highlight some of those things really quickly, and then I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into some of these, uh, these things that have, that have been updated. Okay? API updates. Uh, we talked about this in Tokyo. We talked about um, the... Uh, uh, micro versions that are available now in the API, so there's continually updates there, um, making changes, of course, to some of the features and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> we have the uh, the admin network plugin, so this uh, this is a new feature for the shared servers. It will actually create an admin network as well, and in, along with uh, the Neutron network or the the Nova network that gets created there. Uh, quality of service is a common supported thing now within the Mataka release. Um, and as far as I can tell, there's only one driver that's using it at this point. <laughs> um, 
So one hardware vendor is taking advantage of that. The, there will, there's new drivers, of course. There's four new drivers um, in this release. Um, so there's, there's going to be more uh, coming about as well. New updates to some of the old ones as well. Um, the HDFS native driver was, uh, was worked on a little bit. Um, they uh, added the, the ability to extend the shares um, with that particular driver. Um, there was a session earlier today on CephFS um, native driver. Um, so you can go back and, and listen to the recording if you haven't seen that. Um, there was the inclusion of the LXC, LXD driver. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a little more detail in a little bit, but uh, it's essentially dead. The reason why is because we're taking some new direction there with LXC, LXD. Um, and uh, so we included it, but then, you know, now it's taking a new direction. And I'll talk about what that direction is. Then there's the LVM share driver uh, that we've included. I'll talk about that. Um, snapshotting, the manage and unmanage capabilities for snapshotting. Um, what that means is we can actually now take a snapshot that's been created in OpenStack and we can bring that snapshot into Manila and start managing that snapshot through Manila. And that is all using a new backend feature called Data Copy Services. <clears throat> data Copy Service uh, will, will be taken advantage of with share migration and also replication as well. <clears throat> share replication was enhanced quite a bit with Mataka. There's a whole set of new features that we've added there. Now, I'm going to dig deep on some of these uh, features that we talked about on the Liberty release because I feel like it, it gives us uh, you know, a, a point to start at because these particular features kind of go in succession here because one enables the other. Okay, um, so I think it's important to kind of go back to Liberty and take a look at what we've done uh, before we talk about some of these Mataka features. Um, so share instances, this was needed to enable share migrations and replication. And what this allows us to do um, is on the back side or the back end with, if you take a look at the driver, um, it allows us to um, keep a few things hidden away from the user side so the user doesn't know exactly what's going on. Um, before, we couldn't make this possible because the, the UUID that was created for the share, um, the user would go in and that UUID would change if we did a migration or if we did a replication. With share instance, that UUID stays the same, so essentially the user's not really seeing what's going on because that UUID is, is the same, okay? <clears throat> so that was important that we had that there. And now we get into share migrations. So share, share migrations allows us to do migrations from one host pool to another, okay? We, by using the, the Manila um, migrate command. This is very basic Im implementation. Um, it actually has a fallback approach um, so some of this was actually taken from the Cinder code, where um, <laughs> the fallback approach there in Cinder is actually to use rsync, which, which is a bit slow running an OpenStack and really is, is kind of inefficient. So, um, uh, so if you take a look at share migrations today and how that's working, um, mostly on the generic drivers, you're going to see um, you know, whatever they program in there for share migrations, and maybe they have some customized things that they're doing with the API, which is available. Um, I have not seen really what, really what the other ones are doing there. I know that they're really not taking much advantage of it there, but if you take a look at the NetApp driver specifically, um, they're doing a really good job of it. They're taking advantage of the share migrations here. Um, you're gonna have really fast speeds with the share migrations running on a NetApp environment. <clears throat> availability zones. Uh, this is really important. Uh, this is a really great milestone because we're taking this uh, feature from Cinder and we're essentially reworking that into 
uh, Manila. So this is giving Manila that same capability of having availability zones uh, in Manila. Um, that came into the Liberty release, and uh, I'll talk about why that's important here. Um, allowing us to preserve uh, the availability zones, um, preserve our share my, or our shares within each availability zone, be able to migrate from one availability zone to another. It gives us that high availability that we need in our Manila infrastructure. Okay, so we can migrate from one zone to another or within us within the same zone. Share replication. Share replication is going to give us some non-disruptive um, operations. Now this works in conjunction with availability zones. So you could have multiple zones that are replicating to each other <clears throat> through these availability zones. The failures will happen within either a single availability zone, depending on how you have that set up, or Another high availability solution would be having clustered storage on the back end with uh, clustered data on tap from NetApp, um, where you can actually fail, fail over an entire availability zone to another availability zone. And that's really only working well in the NetApp driver. This is not something that is uh, really taken advantage of in a lot of the other, other drivers. Okay. Now this is one I, I wanted to highlight because this one's really good for testing. Um, if you're standing up a new environment and you really want, re you really want to play around with Manila, um, kick the tires with it, this is going to give you a lot of features to play around with to see how it works out and you can kind of test it out and play. Um, so you can go in, you can manually create your, your physical volumes, your volume groups, just like you would any other LVM environment. Um, so it's really familiar, um, and uh, it'll be easy to, to really play around with. Uh, you have the ability to do SIFs and NFS shares with it, create and delete snapshots, um, create a share from a snapshot. So that's all available through um, the uh, share manager in Horizon. Okay. It also takes advantage of the mirror capability in, LV, in LVM. Uh, which is kind of interesting, and that's what I'm diagramming here on, on the right-hand side is, is that uh, mirroring capability within the LVM driver. Um, so you can have uh, physical volumes that are mirrored uh, within this infrastructure. Maybe this will get a little more solid as uh, you know, time goes on and you can start using this in production, but I highly wouldn't recommend it at this point in time. Um, it is a bit restricted. Um, so, if we take a look at Nova, um, the maximum number of virtual PCI interfaces is really where that restriction comes from. It's limiting us to 26 shares uh, per share server. So when you spin up a share server, um, you can only do 26 shares. Um, so that's, that's a pretty big limitation. <clears throat> so let's move on to talking about SUSE OpenStack Cloud and where we integrate with Manila. Now, the Manila service was introduced as a technical preview in SUSE OpenStack Cloud 5. And that was the Juno release of SUSE's version of OpenStack. And now we are at the, our new milestone is version 6, uh, which is now fully supporting Manila. And uh, most importantly, uh, we're fully supporting the NetApp driver in Manila um, because we feel like it is the most stable of all of the drivers there. Um, if you take, for instance, if you're a storage guy, any storage people here? Um, so if you focus on, um, uh, if you focus, if you're a storage guy and you focus on, you know, the different tiers of storage that you have, you've got, uh, you know, zero through three, right? Um, and at the top, you have high performance storage. Um, you know, you're really not going to get that high performance unless you're using something like NetApp and plugging that into your 
uh, Manila infrastructure. Um, you're not going to get the high performance that you really need um, unless you're going to unless you're using that that uh, NetApp type storage. Um, <clears throat> We have a tool called Crowbar that does our deployment framework. Uh, Crowbar will deploy um, the Manila uh, infrastructure. Um, you go out and you define a few parameters, the host name of your, your uh, cluster data on tap infrastructure, and a few other parameters, and you hit apply, and it will go out and deploy that in your infrastructure. It's pretty slick and easy to do. Um, so the NetApp uh, driver uh, is fully supported there. We have the controller. On the controller side, we have um, the Manila service, which is uh, set up in a, an active passive HA mode um, within our uh, high availability on the control plane. We have um, also the ability to drop in a custom driver if you want to, if you wanted to take advantage of the, the LVM driver or play around with some of the other drivers, you could. Um, that capability is all available there within our, within our UI uh, in Crowbar. I'm going to walk you through a video that's going to demonstrate uh, the deployment framework and then kind of move into how we're creating a share type and a share within the Horizon interface, okay? I went ahead of myself. All right, let's go ahead and play this, and I'll, I'll just kind of walk you through um, this video. And so it started out there on the dashboard, and we can take a look at also the clusters there. And this is the bar clap interface that shows all the OpenStack uh, deployment that's available there. We're going through and we're creating a Manila, um, uh, Manila bar clamp. Okay, and we're creating a new backend for Manila. We're creating the NetApp backend for Manila. This NetApp backend, backend will go ahead and put in a few parameters. We'll give it a name for the vServer and the host name and a few other parameters that we can define, the username and the password when we connect up. And uh, we'll go ahead and add that in there. Uh, it takes a minute. And then you can use your transport type, whether it's HTTPS or not. And we've gone back up to the top. We deleted the default driver that gets created in there. We didn't want that driver. We can go in and we can add another driver. We can copy and paste this other, um, the namespace for that driver that we want to add in there. And then we can add in some key value pairs um, in, that, uh, in that field to create another driver. So you can run multiple drivers together using Manila. And then we want to go down to the bottom. We want to remove all the uh, systems out there. We want to make it highly available. So we add in a cluster to the Manila service, and then add in our Manila share servers, and then click Apply. And that will start deploying it into the environment. That will take several minutes, and then it will complete. I'm not going to let it wait. And then right now, we're going to go to Horizon. We're going to select our our share manager. Under the share manager, we need to create a share type. This share type will be used to connect up to the cluster data on tap. <clears throat> We've created our share type, and now we're going to create a share off of that share type. We'll give it a name and a couple of parameters. You can select NFS, you can select SIFs. We'll put in our share type that we just created, and then click Apply, and he will create our, um, our share. Simple as that. Not super complex <laughs> when you see it in a quick two and a half minute video. <laughs> Takes a little bit longer than that, but, um, but it's, not, it's not super complex. <clears throat> Let's move on uh, now to what's kind of coming in Newton and what you can kind of expect to, to see um, coming here in the future. 
uh, as we move to the next cycle. So share replication, for instance. Um, we're going to expand share replication to cover more cases around things like share servers, um, especially around some of the other drivers, um, to make that a little more solid. Um, and then, of course, share migration. Um, that could use a little work on some of the features. Um, so still not quite completed there on the share migration, and that's really in conjunction with some of the other, like the generic driver and other, other drivers that are connecting into it there. Um, generic grouping is another feature that we're, that we're working on for Newton release. Um, this will replace consistency groups. So there's the idea in uh, Manila uh, with several different types of groups in Manila. So we want to kind of, you know, uh, put those together into its own generic grouping uh, so that uh, they're compatible and that we have one uh, solid stack for, for grouping um, within uh, the Newton release. Um, and then, of course, enhancing interaction between all the other uh, new features. Um, there may be some changes in some of the architectural direction when it comes to the first party drivers. Um, that's being discussed, right? Um, something that I talked about earlier was the LXC driver and how that's, that kind of died in the Mataka release. Um, well, that's being enhanced. They're taking that code. I'm not going to drop the code. We're going to enhance that code a little bit more. And now let's, let's put in Docker containers into that and take advantage of using Docker. And let's create the container driver. Some other new things are, um, instead of having an active passive setup for high availability for the Manila service on the control plane, we're going to put that into an active-active uh, high availability service. Um, so you'll see that coming in Newton. And then, of course, another focus here for Newton will be um, upgrades, you know, being able to upgrade the environment. How do we do that? How do we go about doing upgrades on our shared servers, right? Um, that kind of thing. So getting involved with Manila, uh, I've got a bunch of links here on uh, some of the resources that you can uh, go back and take a look at um, to help you get started uh, into the Manila project. Of course, there's always people that are available to help out on IRC. They're very responsive. Um, there's usually you know, 80 or so people always available there on the IRC channel, um, except around this time during summit time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, there are weekly meetings. Uh, you can join those meetings. Sometimes they're really quick. Sometimes they, um, you know, they'll go on for an hour, depending on what the topic of conversation is, um, or how many people have really joined that meeting. <clears throat> there are several Manila-related sessions. Now, this is quite interesting. This really shows the interest uh, in the community today because there are so many sessions popping up now with Manila. Um, the last OpenStack Summit, there was only three, and now we've got literally dub or double or triple of, of what we had last time. So there's a lot of new things coming along that uh, people are really interested in, um, and people are starting to use this now, um, which is really exciting. <clears throat> and then there's, there's also a Manila work session going on right now. And there will be uh, several other time slots throughout the week uh, that you can join if you're a developer, if you want to get involved there. And so some questions and answers. If anybody's got questions about the drivers or some integrations with Manila, uh, with SUSE distribution. Hi, uh, Gregory Tretsky from Infinidat. Uh, we are a storage provider, and we have a NAS solution now. So we are starting to work on the Manila implementation for, for our NAS. Now, the question is if there is any defined certification process for Manila as exists for Cinder. As far as I know, there's no defined certification <laughs> process <laughs> that's available at this time. And uh, that, that may, that very well may come from a distribution. I don't know at this point. That, so uh, what should we do? So 
it would be great to talk with SUSE about that. Um, I know that, see, we're working directly with NetApp. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've integrated the, the NetApp driver specifically. And so that may be something that uh, you talk to us about and, and we could probably work with you as well on that. Question. Yeah. Can you specify the mount points for the share? Or like, right, for example, it, when you set up the share, yeah. you'll have an export and a location, right? But it would be nice mm -hmm. for the clients not to have to know. What, or is it like the client, the VM's responsibility, the service owner's responsibility who spins up a VM that they have to, they have to know, they have to check and, and horizon and figure out the export and the, the, uh, the mount location? Um. So the auto mount function, the auto mount functionality, that is something that's been desired. Um, that is not something that's been completed yet. Okay. Unfortunately, Thanks. yeah. That is absolutely a you know something that that is that is being worked on. Yeah. No, that's that's not there yet. All right, no other questions? Thanks for coming.